this is Dr. Bev Knox and you are viewing my psychology tutorials. Learn psychology while you sleep. This video lecture is all about introducing you to clinical psychology. Let us first go over what is clinical psychology. As its name implies, clinical psychology is a subfield of a larger discipline of psychology. Like all psychologists, clinical psychologists are interested in behavior and mental processes. Like some other psychologists, clinical psychologists generate research about human behavior, seek to apply the results of that research, and engage in individual assessment. Like the members of other professions, clinical psychologists provide assistance to those who need help with psychological problems. It is difficult to capture in a sentence or two the ever-expanding scope and shifting directions of clinical psychology. Nevertheless, we can outline the central features of the discipline as well as its many variations. The official definition of clinical psychology, adopted in 1991 by the American Psychological Association's Division of Clinical Psychology, reads as follows. The field of clinical psychology involves research, teaching, and services relevant to the applications of principles, methods, and procedures for understanding, predicting, and alleviating intellectual, emotional, biological, psychological, social, and behavioral maladjustment, disability, and discomfort applied to a wide range of clinical populations. The definition highlights activities in which clinical psychologists engage research, teaching, consultation, assessment, treatment, and administration. It also highlights the overall purpose of engaging in those activities to help alleviate and prevent psychological distress and dysfunction, to promote healthy physical, intellectual, emotional, and social developmental in persons of all ages. But there is much more to being a clinical psychologist than engaging in these activities and seeking these goals. We must also learn how it relates to the other branches of psychology and how it relates to mental health. So let's get into what it takes to become a clinical psychologist. Certain requirements for those wishing to be a clinical psychologist have more to do with attitudes and character than with training and credentialing. Perhaps the most notable distinguishing feature of clinical psychologists has been called the clinical attitude or the clinical approach which is the tendency to combine knowledge from research on human behavior and mental processes with effects at individual assessment in order to understand and help a particular person. The clinical attitude sets clinicians apart from other psychologists who search for general principles and apply to human behavior problems in general. Clinical psychologists are interested in research of this kind, but they also want to know how general principles shape lives, problems, and treatments on an individual level. Because clinical psychology is both rigorously scientific and deeply personal, it requires that persons enter in the field to have a strong and compassionate interest in human beings. 
Directors of clinical training programs, the persons who make decisions about which applicants to admit to graduate study in clinical psychology, look for a number of characteristics in program applicants. Among them are the interests in people, honesty and integrity in dealing with others, and emotional stability. These traits are important in many jobs, but they are crucial in clinical psychology because clinicians regularly work in situations that can have significant and long-lasting personal and interpersonal consequences. Even those clinical researchers who don't themselves offer psychotherapy may still make decisions about matters of personal consequence to participants. So integrity, emotional stability, and sound judgment are required for them also. So let us review clinical psychology's mental health professionals. As one of the core healthcare professions, clinical psychology is a field that requires its practitioners to receive specific training. In addition to having a degree from an accredited institution, those who practice clinical psychology must be licensed or certified to do so by the state and national agencies. In other words, clinical psychology like medicine, pharmacy, law, and dentistry, for example, is a legally regulated profession. In the United States, each state established the requirements for a licensure in clinical psychology, awards licenses to those who qualify, and retains the power to penalize or revoke the licenses of those who violate licensing laws. Although the specific requirements vary somewhat among states, licensure laws for clinical psychology generally involve the following requirements. 1. Education Graduation from a school or program approved by the licensing board and or relevant professional organization. 2. Experience. Some term of supervised practice in the field, often embodied in successful completion of an approved practicum, internship, or period of supervision. 3. Testing of competence. Passing of a comprehensive examination, often called a licensing board exam. And four, good character, showing the physical, mental, and moral capability to engage in the competent practice of the profession, often denoted by recommendations by others and by the absence of ethical or legal violations. Doctoral level degrees for fully licensed clinical psychologists are typically either the PhD or PsyD level, though they occasionally include others like the Doctor of Education. At the subdoctoral level, practitioners have titles such as limited licensed psychologist, psychological assistant, mental health counselor, and similar terms. Many states place limits on the practice of clinicians who are not fully licensed. Practitioners of clinical psychology should also know the ethical codes and guide practice. The American Psychological Association's Ethical Principles of Psychologists and Code of Conduct. As noted, Clinical psychologists are considered core mental health professionals. Other professions in this category include counseling psychology, school psychology, social worker, psychiatry, psychiatric nursing, and marriage and family therapy. 
Professionals in these fields are all recognized by governmental agencies and insurance companies as critical providers of mental health services. Like clinical psychology, each of these professions has national or international organizations. Last but not least, are there any challenges in the mental health profession? In applied practicum, clinical psychology faces numerous challenges, not the least of which is that most people with psychological problems still do not receive treatment. Other factors shaping the discipline involve, among other issues, decisions about how science and practice should be combined how training of new psychologists should be conducted, and the various theoretical approaches that can be integrated, and how the current and future systems of healthcare delivery affect the practice of clinical psychology.